The scale of Zatari refugee camp is staggering. Three kilometers from east to west, so big it's now considered Jordan's fifth largest city. And to illustrate its size, back down on the ground, a complete loop of the camp's outer ring road takes more than 20 minutes by car. And inside the camp, the number of residents has grown from a few hundred to about 120,000 people. And where there's that kind of population growth, commerce quickly follows. So this is Zatari's main business street. It's home to hundreds of shops and services. And it's so popular with Syrians and camp workers, it's been nicknamed the Champs-Élysées in reference to the bustling shopping street in the French capital, Paris. A walk along the street reveals a brisk trade in anything from mobile phone SIM cards, cigarettes, gas refills and electrical appliances. But aside from the sale of goods, services play an important part in creating a sense of normality in the camp. The owner of this business quit his beauty salon in Dara, Syria and moved to Zatari last year. The shop generates a small profit by offering haircuts at a one and a half dollar fixed price. But running a camp business is wraught with contradictions. I'm worried about lost opportunities and if I'm making the right decisions. For example, I look around me and think, should I renovate the place and expand it? And then I think, why? You're going back. Some people say the camp was better in the old days when they used to distribute meals. But I think that now is better. We can open our own shops. And the fact that this is possible is good for us. Now we're living like anyone else. And there's no better way of illustrating that point than having a look round Atef's wedding dress hire shop, a hot spot for brides to be. Women used to come here, say they have weddings and they can't find dresses. So we got two dresses for rent and it worked out well. We have two weddings a day and there are people who come from outside the camp to rent dresses because it's cheaper here. The profit is not that much, but we are doing okay. Sometimes we even take five dinars from people who can't afford to pay much. But while formal businesses thrive, so too does Zatari's black market. District gangs are known to make a handsome profit by selling on aid goods and siphoning off electricity supplies. The man tasked with tackling this issue is camp manager Killian Kleinschmidt. That's the live chicken market here. A walk around the camp reveals how his policy of encouraging business development is having a harmonizing effect. Hello. But sometimes, and in the interest of maintaining peace, even he has to turn a blind eye to the camp's more questionable business deals. Back in Mr. Kleinschmidt's meeting room, and you can't help but notice this. The interactive map once used to explain his camp strategy to US Secretary of State John Kerry. In short, district councils need to be introduced to improve law and order. We need to bring in control, manage it, but also give the freedom for people to develop their businesses and develop their capacities, develop their homes. So that's why we, as we speak, trying to put in place physical compounds, physical administration, divide the whole place into 12 districts, which allows us to actually know who is there, what they're doing, and help them to doing their things in a better way, in a more regulated way, but also in, in a free way. That's what free market economy is about. So economic theory as a way of bringing about calm and stability. But keeping the peace in a camp is not always that straightforward. At the end of a long, hot day, tempers can fray. Oh. Tear gas used by Jordanian security to disperse a frustrated crowd. A reminder that Zatri Champs-Élysées is far from its French namesake when it comes to doing business.